EOT and ETL are two core concepts for data engineering. But what are they? Well, in today's video, we're going to cover what exactly is ETL, what exactly is EOT, and then we're going to look at them in action so that you can actually understand from doing what does it mean. So let's first look here at the README. So we'll close down that code. So ETL, EOT, the letters stand for extract, load, and transform, and it's just the two different varieties are such that you either load and then transform or you transform and then load. And if you think about it and the way that that's laying out is that in one of them, you do the transformations oops, prior to loading, meaning that they kind of happen in flight or in memory. Whereas extract load transform is that you extract the data, plop it down, then you reload it back up to do the transformations. Now, this is the standard procedure for any sort of data engineering. You're getting the data from somewhere, you're changing it, and then loading it, or vice versa. But why would you choose one over the other? Well, traditionally, people have always chosen ETL, because the transformations are done in memory, and storage has always been expensive. Whereas ELT, Extract Load Transform, is what's followed more commonly nowadays because of how cheap, scalable cloud storage is. Because if you think about it, if you're just pulling data out and then plopping it in the cloud, it's probably not that expensive. And that's why a lot of people use Medallion architectures versus Extract, Transform, Load, where you would only really store your transformed data. But what if you want access to the raw data, especially if you're going to do some sort of big data analysis? So the next key point is in its use case. ETL is perfect for structured systems, such as data warehouses. It's transformed, then it's loaded in. Whereas ELT, much better for modern cloud architectures, like data lakes. Just plop it in the lake, and then we'll do with it later. So that's the two. And if you've done any of the tutorials in the channel, they have been ELT, Extract Load Transform. Extracting it, plopping it into raw, and then using medallion architecture to go from bronze to silver to gold, which is just transforming it each time. But the initial step is extract and then loading it, then we transform it afterwards. So just before we get into the code, this entire directory, by the way, is on GitHub. You can go and check it out. So the way that it's going to work is that we have these Python scripts. We have an ELT and an ETL one. I know they look really similar, but... Um, this one's ELT, another one's ETL, and we'll put them side by side. We'll, we'll scan how they differ. Um, and the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna run it inside of a virtual environment. Now that way that we can install the dependencies using pip install without it installing into the entire system. If this is new to you, just a quick brief is that these imports are bringing in libraries. Now these libraries, we may not want them on our system for everywhere to use because it can clog the system up. And then different different pieces of code may require different uh, versions of these libraries. So instead we create a virtual environment, and then when we activate this environment, this is our core environment for this specific script. So let's put these side by side and we'll, we'll quickly go through. So on the left hand side, step one, we have extract. On the right hand side, step one, extract. And this is simply hitting this URL, which is an Earthquake API. It's the same one which we have been hitting for all the other tutorials of the series, which is uh, gets seismic and earthquake data from a specific URL. And you give it, it comes back in a JSON format. You just give it a start time and an end time, which is a day. And it gives you all of the earthquake events in that day. So we get that data, which comes in a JSON format. And that's the exact same for both. However, this next step, this loading or transforming step is where it differs. So in our extract, we now want to transform this before loading it. So we're not gonna store the raw data. We're gonna modify it in memory, then we're gonna save it. So you can see here that we're doing some basic transformations, cleaning the values, and then, uh, and then step three, we load the data, i.e., in this instance, we're saving the data in its final destination. Whereas on the right-hand side, you can see that after step one, we load the data by saving it as a raw file. We then transform the data, 
after it's been loaded, so it's been saved, then it's transformed, and then we save it at its final destination. And so that's an ELT. And so if we run this, we'll be able to show you what happens. So first things first is let's activate our Python environment. So you see from the readme, it has all the instructions here, is that we're going to do, we're on Mac, so it's this Python M VNV, and we'll just name it VNV as well. Oops. And then you do source, and that activates it. So we'll just copy that, paste it in here. Although I use Python 3, so we'll do that. And there we go, we're in here. And then we want to pip install recursively the requirements. So the requirements are these external libraries that we're pulling in. So if we open up requirements, you can see that that's, that's in there. And so it pulls them in and it installs it and it keeps them in this virtual environment here which is cool, instead of on your system and it gets kind of cluttered, it's stuck, it's, uh, stuck right here, which is perfect. So, now, what we're going to do is we're going to run it, so we'll do Python 3, and we'll do ETL process, enter, and then it'll go, get the data, bring it back, transform it, and then plop it, and there you go, final. So you can see it took a minute to pop up, but that's because it went and got the data. It done all the transformations in memory in the computer, not on hard disk, in memory, and then finally put it out here like so. Perfect. On the other side, if we were to change this to be ELT, boom, rapid, because it's not in memory this time. So if we check it, we see that we initially saves it as a raw, which is a... Uh, a raw, sorry, as a JSON, the raw file, which is exactly what we get back from the API. Then it reads that in and does the transformations afterwards. And then the transformations, it gives us ELT. And there we go. And as we can see, if we compare them on both sides, they're exactly the same. The only difference is on this ELT, we have the raw data also. So there you go. That's a very simple ETL, ELT, explanation i hope you enjoyed if you have any questions let me know below and i'll get right back to you we have part this is part of a series where we've created a data engineering pipeline on fabric using the entire azure data engineering stack on databricks next we're using synapse and then next after that we're using azure data factory and then also finally a full kind of on-prem solution as well so hope you enjoyed if you did like comment subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.